gaps in there, we'll get through it and it'll come off as really professional. You're kidding me, right? It's a sliding scale. <laughs> Have you met him? <laughs> oh my. Yep. There's we're no chance we're going to be <laughs> at all. The music's already too loud. Actually, no, no, it's, it's right. all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Normally it's always too loud. This time, no. <laughs> Well, welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. We are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another bacon episode of our podcast. I love bacon. Not Soggy's Kevin Bacon. going to be so helpful. Right? Right? It's episode 146. We are recording on July 8th, which is, of course, Kevin Bacon's birthday. Kevin is 62, and if you didn't know, he was born in Philadelphia. Well, Soggy's not going to help with that. I take it back. I feel like we're such a historian this week. This, this is great. Uh, if you're not driving, take out your bingo card because you never know what might happen. Let's move on because we have a big, uh, we have a full show for us today. And Once we're late. <laughs> we're only late because That's the fun of, of a podcast is that us- everyone listening listens at their own time and pace. And That's they don't realize you. that we're waiting for late 45 minutes. <laughs> so if I'm sleeping at the end of the show, you know why. So, uh, Jeff, since you're the latecomer to this party, let Hi. me know, what are you working on? Uh, yeah, so uh, floor work has continued in my house. Uh, just like when you're trying to trim a mustache, it's hard to stop at one spot. So <laughs> I pulled a bunch of carpet out of my hallway and man, did it smell like cat pee. Whew. Um, yeah, so uh, I also would like to report that whoever built my house is stupid. Uh, the plywood in the subflooring uh, somewhere in my hallway transitioned from uh, too thin to meet current building standards to some thickness that is between sizes that are readily available in my Lowe's depot. So... What, uh, when, when was your house built? I have no idea. Should be on the paperwork. I'm going to guess 1970, late 70s, no. early 80s, maybe. Yeah, early, early 80s. It's 80s. See, yeah, early 80s. 80s was the building boom. And whenever you have building booms, you immediately get people cutting corners. Like, like 82. That's kind of where I'm thinking. Yeah, that feels right. It, it's hard to tell what's original and what isn't. But whatever it was, uh, I went with the thinner stuff. And so tomorrow begins the great floor leveling. I got goo. Yay. I got tons of goo, man. And we're just going to. When we get to what. Up. And when we get to what I'm working on, I'm going to ask you questions about that. <laughs> All right. Chris, what are you working on? Meat and jelly beans. <laughs> right? no, they, that Chrissy, happened so fast. What you working on? <laughs> Meat and jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> but hang on. No, nobody wants to hear jelly beans. I'm going to shoot faster. All right. <laughs> oh, that'll make it better. Yeah. All right. Um, boat work. Is he fucking eating? Right? Mother <laughs> effing sanding. We're ready to kill each other. And the we boat. Put pri- we if put I could primer throw on the it. boat. The primer didn't level out the way that it should have. Oh, another to. leveling problem. Yep. So once you put guide coat on, and by the way, I will say guide coat, if you've never used it, it is amazing stuff what like is it? really it's uh it's a a like a dark gray powder that you rub over a surface and it settles into the imperfections so you see all of them and also the e4 you can see when you have sanded out the imperfections so so, so basically it's an ego destroyer man i've done a oh, great yeah. job priming this i'm gonna put this powder on there and oh i suck well, then oh, especially once it. you have yeah. sanded it all off to the point to get all the guide coat back off, then you see you've sanded most of the primer you just put on back <laughs> off. Well, that's the idea behind guide coat. Like if you have gray primer, 
you, you hit it with a little bit of black and then you sand. And well, it's this black. is white. But well, yeah, like, either we, direction, we, you know. We just weren't expecting to take so much of this stuff off to the point where, like, uh, I really hope the finish coat sticks because <laughs> now we're sticking it mostly, or, you know, half half the gel coat, half the primer. Anyway, we're going to find out. Um, what else? Uh, we went up to the Cape last weekend without a boat. Did a lot of handyman sort of work to help my parents out, like, you know, cleaning gutters and fixing broken things and et cetera. Things that you do for your, your parents when you're there. Um, and then actually spent a little bit of time sitting on a floaty chair tied to the dock because we didn't have a boat. So instead of tying the floaty chair to the boat, we tied to the dock, which is not as good, but it worked. Uh, first world problems. I can't go out of my boat, so I have to tie my floaty chair to my dock. Um, and last on the lagoon say, that I spend my summers. Don't forget that part. Yes. Lagoon? Come on. Yeah. It's, it's a pond. Um, and it's not a last, pond. It's called Eel Pond. If it yeah. touches the ocean, it is not a pond. Well, it's not a lagoon. Is it salt water? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I hate to say this, but Jeff's right. I'm, I'm right. Googling the <laughs> definition of lagoon. As oh, lagoon. <laughs> it's fun to say. I will say the most relaxing time I've had in the last week is in stop and go traffic in the Mercedes because it does all of it. I just sit there getting a massage while the car does the traffic. I don't, it does the steering, it does the brakes, it does the gas, it does all of it while I have a massage. Does the car honk the horn and yell obscenities? Only in New Jersey. Okay, because I feel like and, the and German, Rhode Island. I feel like the Rhode German Island. car would be really good at it. It's good at swearing as Germans are. But it doesn't really need to because it's just kind of happy rolling with yeah. whatever it's got. It, it Schnell! Schnell! There's uh, a lot more things about Scheiße. 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 Scheiße and cough. Schnell. Yeah, on that subject, Mansell, what are you working on? <laughs> Hold on, before we get there. Uh, a lagoon is a stretch of salt water separated by the sea by a low salt bank or coral reef. We sand don't bank. have a low salt bank or coral so, reef. So, sand bank. Beach. We have, have a, we have an inlet. We have an actual inlet There's, and an island beach. That is a picture of a lagoon right there. Yeah, You're right. It's lagoon. fine. I'm going lagoon. I stand by lagoon. Go ahead, Mantel, What are you working on? Mantel, go ahead. So my office is back to working from home because we had a positive case. Wah, wah. Yeah, you went for, hey, right? <laughs> <laughs> you went from, we're going to work all the time. Yes. Luckily, it happened over a uh, five-day weekend. So we, we are exercising an abundant, well, technically a four-day weekend, but I had surgery, so it's a five-day weekend. So we are exercising an overabundance of caution. And and how's your fatty bit? Feel it's, not, it's not there. It's awesome. Excellent. It's cool scar you want to see? No. All right. So uh, I, 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 and you guys see in the notes, I put in there, and uh, I will go to share screen. And we will do this. Oh, sharing screen. We're going to share the video. Make sure you go back to grid view, Jeff. All right. Da, da, da. Can you post as disabled share screen? I, I will get there one second. Uh, all participants can share. Go. All right. This share screen. Pod, pod do like not care about this. Uh, I don't, pod don't care. YouTube. All you podcast listeners, go to YouTube, watch it on YouTube. Or don't because, you know, our market. So this is my initial hack at the cubicle farm that I had to bring over piece by piece and then kind of reassemble and modulate. But that is my garage. And I actually, you guys never saw the garage in the daylight, but this is all like functional space. So I'm actually kind of happy about that. Chrissy, what do you got? How long is it going to stay this way? Who cares? Okay. <laughs> so... Not long. And if you go back and you listen to our episode, uh, the meat bag touches the machine. I'm actually, I listened to it because I wasn't there, but I'm going to start exercising. What tools do I go for? I, I broke those three sections down into functions. So the far right is automotive, far left is house. And then the middle is tools that can go either way. And I'm going to see which tools I reach for the most, if they are easy to access and all that other kind of stuff. Once I kind of get that configuration down, then I got to write it all down, tear the whole thing apart. And I'm going to rip all the drywall out and redo the electrical in the garage. So I have outlets at a much more logical place than I have them now. That's a big so, project. 
it's a long-term project. So I'm committed for the, you know, a couple of years on this one, but that's what I've been working on. And I got uh, in now that I've got kind of an organized workspace, I can find tools and get stuff done. So I got a lot of work done on the Toyota, got the bed put back on the truck, got the wheels, uh, the front wheels. We were excited to see your jack stands. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And so I got the bed put on that and I rolled it out, which was just in time because the Mercedes had to go in there because the Mercedes now has the dreaded buy here, pay here airbag. Uh, it's sagging in the right front wheel. And I've uh, done some preliminary uh, investigation and talked with the uh, resident E1R Mercedes expert. And we're both of the opinion that it is in fact the airbag. So with... Yep. No car that I personally own, Vicky's car still runs, with no car that I personally own or motorcycle, functional, I did what any reasonable host of a podcast would do. And today You got started, an Uber. No, we started a flooring project. Oh, I figured he would just buy something else. So. <laughs> right? Yep. The flooring project. It's the way to go. It's about time we, for a $1,000 E36 or E36. Yeah, yeah. Oh, do not well, say We that. know how, long, how well that went. No. Yeah. Yes. So we found out that our tongue and groove uh, floating floor, 100% glued down. Oh. Yeah. Well, hey. I hope you like scraping. Great. We'll have this out by lunch. And that was the conversation in the Slack channel of, okay, well, I'm going to have to buy a new reciprocating saw. So let's get a good one. I guess that's what happens when your house is built on a slab is everything's glued because no, you can't really you say, that's it. You, no, yeah, you don't need to. You just you put the under floor on a slab. It floats. Yeah. You can absolutely, and I don't know why they glued it. Uh, all right. All right. So uh, we're going to move on. Are you, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Chrissy, what you working on? Oh, nothing new. Uh, same as Chris. Boat, work, boat, work, sleep. Boat, However, work, our boat, uh, sleep. Boat, eat our, sometimes. Our, our listeners and uh, social media fans noticed you got a workout in while Chris is being lazy, floating in a lagoon. Sure, yes. Our <laughs> listeners, Were did you I post that one? Did I post that one? You are. Oh, know. never mind. Yeah, you might have been on your personal one. Oh, it was on mine. I was like, Sorry, oh, yeah. that's not for as me as if like ninety percent of our podcast listeners aren't like personal friends of ours. I don't like. I don't have any accepted all their friend requests. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was and, looking at my and now it's time oh, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> i was gonna tell a story about cory dickman but i would not, i will not no, go it. ahead go for it jeff okay Let me finish so my jelly I, bean. I, I was looking at my phone <laughs> i i was I, I had to call somebody and i was scooping through my phone and looking at things and i was like uh i, I we just had an e1r race and i was talking to cory dickman because i didn't recognize his voice and i realized for some reason i have cory dickman's phone number on my phone and i said how is that possible i don't ever remember trading phone numbers with this dude not, not that i have a problem with it i just how does if you have the same kind of phone for years and years and years and years it is amazing what kind of phone numbers end up in your like unless you purge i just them. purge once in a while right yeah see i i never purge and they probably are getting saved to the cloud. So even if I purged them, they would come back. But like, I look through here and I find like, monkey boy. Like, who is that? <laughs> he has no name other than monkey boy? Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of times I look at these people and I'm like, who is that? We're never getting through this show, by the way. Yeah. So let's going to keep going. Right, News and notes. In the, in the category of shows Chrissy has never seen, it's a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist, but the car did. One of the original TV versions of the Night Industries 2000, a.k.a. Kit, is headed to auction. Among Hollywood's beloved 80s pop culture artifacts, the Kit Firebird Trans Am is part of Julian's Hollywood Legends and Explorers auction set to culminate in July 18th, 19th. The car is a pre-sale estimate of 100000 to 200000 because, you know, they don't want to narrow it down too much. What, what, why bother, right? It's still a freaking <laughs> lot of money. Yeah, I know. Uh, we, we get the, sometimes those estimates from attorneys like at, our, at work. They're like, well, this case has a verdict potential of 200000 to $2.8 million. I'm like, well, thanks. That really helped. <laughs> that was great. You could have just said a lot. Yeah. Okay, because when they fire that guy, I'm, I'm totally available to do that job. I could totally do that. Uh, anyway. 10 to a gajillion? Yeah, that's, that's about 100 times very more than the very best 1982 Firebird out there. 
with 140 horsepower 305 yeah no this it's terrible <laughs> yeah ceasefire injection no it had a carburetor still man but it was just the worst uh yeah that's Jeff, great what do you got uh i'd like to mention that i have uh three people under o one of them is named ogre and under q i have quid bacchus how did I don't you know if that's have a my, you have not. my phone list you somehow downloaded my phone. That those are all my people. Those I, are people Monkey, you know. Monkey Boy was best man at my wedding. Like, yes, it's getting weird. Huh? Ogre, so ogre, much- <laughs> ogre is a guy. A guy that he used to be my boss. He's still a friend of mine. And Quid Bacchus is a friend of mine. You, you. Luckily, we, none of them listen. You have an iPhone, don't you? Yeah. But how, how did they get on my intro? Phones have a social you, disease. You <laughs> hacked my. You hacked my phone. You little run. Uh, who knows. Uh, I wonder if that has anything to do with our shared phone number because we both have the E1R phone number. No, that you loaded. downloaded no. something. Or yeah. it was uh, when we were instructing for Extreme Experience. No, you, I don't think you, that was. You snagged something off of one of the Lamborghinis that I had my phone paired to. Who knows? <laughs> uh, so does anyone have, is anyone having deja vu out there? And I don't just mean the darkness on my face because I'm totally going to change that light bulb in the middle of the show, right? That I just uh-huh. noticed about. Uh, the virus is making a comeback. Uh, and Harbor Freight jack stands are getting recalled. Uh, yeah, so the owner and founder of Harbor Freight, Eric Schmidt, has apologized because the three-ton jack stands that were replaced, the previously defective units, had a small number identified with a welding defect. Yeah, I guess... Uh, That's embarrassing. <laughs> somebody hired a ceramist to weld their... Harbor Freight Jack stands. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Harbor Freight is offering a cash refund or full store credit. Uh, jumping ahead a bit, some listeners had some feedback. Uh, FMC Racing said, "Pa, like we can afford some fancy pants imported jack stands from the Far East. Whatever happened to good old American cinder blocks?" And uh, I believe you had that holding up your truck there the other day, didn't you? Stacked in the the jankiest manner possible. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, Tom L., uh, who is not five foot nine, uh, <laughs> pointed out that it was only a matter of time before their jack stands lived up to the quality of their screwdrivers. I'm on a group chat with a bunch of my Oklahoma friends, and somebody said, you know, we all knew what we were getting when we shopped there, and it's probably everyone has the same supplier, just Harbor Freight's the only one honest enough to admit it. It's true. Uh, yeah, so link is in the show notes. Uh, it was posted on Drive. You probably already know it because it's been on every Facebook everywhere. So there it is. Don't, uh, don't, don't trust them. Make sure you get the part numbers. Return them. These are, all the, these are all the three tons. The six tons and the eight tons are all good. Yeah, probably the two tons too. If you Google it, you'll figure it out. Under the heading mm-hmm. of news that will intrigue Jeff, Camille Kaluski has written a piece at Hooniverse that a tr- oh he left at a t- whatever he doesn't care a turbocharged 250 horsepower Mazda three is coming. We all had a chance to see the new Mazda three. It's tiny, uh, has the worst smallest trunk ever, which I sat in at Atlanta and Philly auto shows. I think most of us liked it. I, don't I, li- I, li- I see them on the street. I still think they're good looking cars. They're yeah. cute. They're small. I don't like the C-pillar. It needs a little more mm. hatch. They're, yeah. they're small. Anyway, Jeff Glucker has called it the best in its class. But Jeff, guess what? Jeff's not listening. I know. Uh, Mazda press release states that turbocharged Mazda 3 is coming in 2021 with all-wheel drive. Uh, it's reported to be the same 2.5 liter uh, that is available in the CX-5, CX-9. Tuned uh, for the smaller Mazda, producing 300 fo- 320 foot-pounds of torque, and it will transform the vehicle from a small, sporty Mazda sedan than once we knew. Anyone thinking... The new 323 GTX? No, because oh, yeah. no. this, this is not sporty. It's just, let's take the, the Mazda 3, which is a fine car, and stick in a good turbocharged motor. Cool. Still automatic. Still same suspension. Still only available in the pimped out trim. Not a rally homogulation Small. special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope. Not available with the CVT. Only available, uh, they say, potentially It's a six-speed. Yeah. No, the manual is never coming. It's a six-speed automatic. All right, yeah. Yeah. All right. It is nice looking, though. And, like he's, you know. yeah, did you, see, did you see this come with a turbo? Yes, I read okay. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, all right, all right, all right cool. All right, upcoming races. Uh, 
Phil over at World Racing League got us the entry list for their Road Atlanta this weekend. 41 cars, 10 Mazdas, 1 Honda, 18 BMWs, 10 P cars, and a Genetta G55, which from our perspective, it's really the only interesting car out there. Uh, it's cool, though. And uh, a lot of just generic people's names, car team names, which is weak sauce, except for flying purple people eaters and the completely original Casey Card Motorsports. Hope they didn't pay ten thousand dollars to learn that a that marketing was their team company. Name. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, host number five has gotten us the entry list for the upcoming Rocky Mountain Breakdown Rally this weekend. From Eric, it's not big, but the quality is amazing. I feel like he says that a lot. <laughs> He's right. We had to Google this, but there's a. 19- <laughs> That's a penis joke. <laughs> Thank you. There's a 1959 Premier Ped Mini. No idea what which, that is. Which Hold is on a, a second, fam- and I it will was show a, you. It's a Fiat 1100 slash 103 that was imported to India and sold by Premier Automobiles Limited. The story from Eric. Oh, getting oh. parts for this is going to be amazing. Wow. <laughs> That's yes. the fun of it. I mean, India loves these old cars they keep driving, like the Hindustan Ambassador, which is like a 1958 Hillman Imp under the skin, exactly. basically, is still like the most popular car in India. Anyway, you want to stop sharing your screen so that I can actually see the uh, notes? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Apparently, Tom Webb was looking at it on eBay and dropped his phone in trying to catch it. He accidentally bit on it, and they won. So that's, that's how they ended up awesome! with the car. That is the best. <laughs> that, that's about right. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> uh, straight out of Bosnia, speaking of... Uh, potentially fiats that have been rebadged into something else. They're running a Yugo, of course. Uh, But from Eric says, I don't know anything about the Yugo either, but they have four people registered to drive it. So yeah, there it goes. How many mountain passes do you think that car is going to clear with four passengers? Back light. (sighs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And hope they're skinny. Wildcat Rescue is, it has a 63 Buick Wildcat. The couple running the got engaged in this car during the rally on seven in 17. They're now celebrating their one-year anniversary, and that's so much fun. I hope it lasts, and I hope they don't get into any fights. Our IG buddies and the Lemon Blockheads are driving down from PA in their 1985 Toyota for a wheel drive, all four-wheel drive wagon. Uh, that is awesome. Hashtag Absolutely. longer for life. Yep. And if you're watching this on YouTube, focus on Jeff now. Team Sordic Racing is bringing a 72 Lincoln Continental. No. no, no, this is no. not a good idea. Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff's having a little little PTSD now. Maybe it has a hot tub in it though. That would make it better. Mm. So, yeah, at least you have something. They can to bring do all this stuff broken. though. They can, and their friends home when their friends' free air blows up. So it's good. <laughs> My next. Yes. Yeah, but, but we, I we was, shocked you. We shell shocked you with that. I know. I was pulling up a picture of a, of a Lincoln, uh, of my Lincoln. Uh, other entries include a 944, which is being prepped as a Lemons car with no HVAC controls, and 86 Subaru GL lifted on 26 inch tires. It looks so good. That's about right. Uh, 71 Datsun 510. Please sell it to me after the rally. Uh, Fort Kickass from Texas has an 87 300 TD Mercedes. By the way, they are en route already, have broken down. They're stuck Team- in Amarillo right now. Yeah. Deep, deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> uh, Team Shitsubishi in an 89 Montero painted up like a Paris to car entry. All right. And I'm going to nerd out one last time and share my screen on that one because I, it it is really good looking. All right. I'll just keep reading. Follow all the action on Instagram by following hashtag lemons rally or because mental wanted not to be in his garage the afternoon of the heat. And when it's 109, all those Instagram accounts will be in our show notes. That is an amazing species. Yep. yep, it's the four door instead of the two door, but still, the Hope Nikon nice, appreciates Jeff. the free advertising. Right. Yep. Okay, some recent race results because cars are racing these days. Sometimes, some places. Uh, Champ Car ran Daytona this past Sunday on July fifth. Ninety cars turned a lap. Uh, the Van Buren boys won C in a 06 Datsun Ultima, Datsun Nissan Ultima, is which they listed as right. Uh, all in the same lap, uh, crowd control class D racing a, a 95 Ford CVT Cobra, all of it, which found from race monitor. So if it's wrong, 
sorry, uh, Glazing Confused in a Miata 1A in fourth overall, and a couple of our friends were there. Uh, Florida Man Racing in 70th, Fat Crack in 42nd, and Never Start Racing finished 64th. Uh, Metzl is wearing his Florida Man Racing hat. It's very, very fashionable. Yes. Uh, I know Fat Crack finished fourth in class too, and it was actually the first time they'd finished Daytona in about three years. Cause they try to hit that race all the time and they've had a oh. series of bad luck. Donnie was also wrestling with the Mustang, which we'll get to later. Okay. And uh, this, we should also mention was the support race for IMSA. Uh, so th- a lot of people got to watch this live. Uh, it was from like some crazy 6 AM to 11 AM or something like that on sun on Saturday. So, you know, not your standard timing for that rainy listener feedback on the gram mental posted of what you're working on uh the bearded grease monkey said ripped another tercel engine out and apart found the lower crank timing gear was loose which chewed up the woodruff key and gear ordered some new bearings rings gaskets and a few other accessories for it uh why is the bearded grease monkey ripping apart tercels just well, now he's got a, he's got a collection of them, yes. Yeah, okay. That's a terrible collection. Try stamps. <laughs> Seashells. It, Dr. Don't Florida. work in cars. That's a terrible so, yeah, hobby. Terrible hobby. And we can uh, also add restoring classic boats. Terrible hobby. Terrible hobby. hobby. Don't uh, do Dr. That. Florida Man was fighting electrical gremlins at Daytona. Uh, he also used an old SUV to straighten a bent race car. <laughs> which is a trick that we all love. Um, I, is this the one that I watched where they didn't tie down the far side and they just drug it and everybody was posting, you got you to put that between two trucks, you moron. Uh, was, it, was it a white Mustang? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Or yeah, tree, does it, trees work matter. well too. They got it back on track. The, the yeah. white Mustang finished the race after getting uh, pinched. Uh, this RVs. Just in. Not, yeah. not your parents' RVs, but <laughs> someone's <laughs> RV also works. This okay. just in from the uh, Fort Kickass crew on the Instagram. Their Mercedes is dead in Amarillo, so they rented a Kia. Oh, <laughs> deep in the heart of Texas. Texas. Uh, They'll enjoy Eric. the air conditioning. That's right. <laughs> Eric, aka DJ914 Lover, was helping update a 73 Gia's electrical system. He's been working on that Kia for a little while, right? Yeah, he's helping out somebody he knows with it. You know, is it with is all it of Eric's sac- ample uh, extra time? Yeah. Is it is it sacrilegious to say that as a Porsche lover, I might prefer the Ghia than a nine fourteen? You'd say whatever you want. There, I don't think I think they're all terrible. But you know. <laughs> air cooled motor just isn't that good. Anyway, <laughs> on the YouTube, uh, Cameron Aubernon says I can now put faces to all the Lemons Eye Racing crew. Also, Mental is wonderful to talk to you on the previous Twitch stream. He must have confused you with somebody else. Um, <laughs> Luke's Cars was talking about the upcoming Lemons Rally, which includes an optional run up Pikes Peak. So, so there's going to be a possibility for points for high brake temps after I spent all this money converting my car to MR2 brake parts so that I could make cooler, cooler brakes. Dang it. Hang on. Got to go back to those solid rotors. <laughs> uh, James. Uh, oops, sorry. I was going to say, camera, camera is a she. We both used to write for the truth about cars at the same time. Okay. Sorry. James Mullern uh, has a lot to say on our channel. Uh, having just started getting into iRacing, I'm aligned with Mental that I would like to bring skills over uh, over to the meat space. I totally agree that the sense of speed is not there in iRacing. He added, Rich Rebuilds is a, les- a legend. I love his videos. He also read Tune In to Win by Carol Smith, and even though it is oriented towards Formula Ford, however, it's a very inter- interesting read. Uh, he points out if there's a, PDF on- there's a PDF online for that, and we didn't know, so now there's a meal link in our show notes. Ta-da. James also had a whole lot of stuff about our trailer episode. So he's been, I think that's primarily how he gets his, his watches us through YouTube. So how's it going, James? All right. Another fan of our YouTube is Alex, AKA Miata 13B. And he was talking to Jeff about the one monitor ordeal with sim racing is a training tool. It is a disadvantage. However, it can be used as an extremely good training tool. I only race with one monitor myself. And while it gives a disadvantage of not being able to look in the mirrors or see overlap, what I ended up doing is using the limited view to mentally imagine what my surroundings are. The more and more that you develop this ability, it is actually one of the few things that can carry over to meet space racing. Meh. <laughs> Racer Rona reaction. 
uh, Jimmy Johnson, Felipe Nasser, and some drag racer that I sure as hell never heard of. Who? Uh, I, I don't know. I could click the link if you want to. <laughs> uh, they all got the Rona and Ooh. weren't able to race this weekend. Ooh, so Rona. as we know, professional racing is back. Uh, if you test positive, they're not going to let you race. So uh, Jimmy Johnson, who is the seven-time NASCAR champion and one of the biggest uh, names in the sport, uh, was not supposed was supposed to be at Indianapolis, and he wasn't able to be there. Uh, it is Bob Tasca the third. It was planning to race his Ford NHRA Funny Car in the same weekend, but uh, they can't because they all got thrown up. Bummer, it's a shame. Yeah, uh, NASCAR. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, has been doing a lot of races back to back to back to back to back and i think in the article they said that jimmy johnson has been on like 14 flights in three weeks and uh he and his wife both tested positive so uh fingers crossed that they get healthy yep lemons is still doing some great eye racing and uh thursday they had their silly walk races I think they're always fun. It was Laguna Seca. Jeff and I were commenting along with Sean Yoder for Nemesis Labs, Lisa Sutton and Eric from the 24 Hours of Lemons, and Ryan, a.k.a. Bearded Sim Racer. So Matt Sitka would take the W with the Hester second and third, then the Gladiator races, which was dang old Camaros and trophy trucks. No black flags. That was funny. Shlavine, Santiago, and Loeing took the first, second, and and uh, the sec or took the first race. The second race was won by Tyler Stank while he was broadcasting with us. We brought him in to the, the conversation with Murray and Schlevine. Among our notable viewers, Gentleman Dave, of course, was there, who's now back home, and John Butler from New Hampshire Motorsports Park. So if you want to get all these insider jokes like trust the Jeff Gordon's fisherman, you can uh, catch that uh, those episodes. But we do have a link to the video in our notes. What I do have you mean to gentleman s- Davis back home. He's always home. That's the <laughs> you know, just like a turtle. He yep. carries it on his back. But he, he's back in an actual home that doesn't go places. He New fired Jersey. up his uh, he fired up his Chevelle and uh, weird. Oh yeah, I thought he didn't yeah. have a home. He did. Oh, I he thought just... he got kicked out of his home. No, oh, no, okay. it's a choice. He's... It's all a choice. Yeah. He 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 actually mentioned like, why am I making those condo payments? I don't know. Uh, exactly. Uh, so we had a race. Who wants to talk about our race? I'll talk about it. Go for it. We had a Sunday night race too. That was fun. I don't really recall who won, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Nate Shaleen. Yeah, probably. He always wins. Uh, yeah. So because there was no official Thursday night race, when we usually mirror their tracks, we had to pick our own track to run on our Monday night UNR races. We decided to have a little fun and we did a rally cross track in cars that did not belong on dirt. So we picked up Sonoma rally cross because it was free, which is like uh, the S's of Sonoma and a couple other things just with dirt dumped on top. And then a couple paved corners uh, mental before insisted, whatever we do, he had to be able to run the Mercedes AMG GT three. So that's why we picked dirt because <laughs> that seems like the best place for one of those and watching those AMGs trying to get up the dirt hill was hilarious <laughs> it was yes <laughs> just a just, slow slow climb it reminded me of driving my rx7 when i lived in nebraska and it would snow i'm just i'm yeah, not getting yeah. anywhere in a hurry it was, but i am going sideways yep, yep that happened the whole way <laughs> so that was fun uh, we also had legends 87s nascar uh, these are nascar's jetta and we tried the kia optima race car which did surprisingly well actually uh, that's I, I liked it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a front wheel drive and it worked so that was good. We had, again, lots of fun. We had a good crowd this week, some new people who haven't been there very much. So great to see all those folks. So if you're looking for a good time on Monday nights and who's not, let us know. Join you, us. Or just join us. It's, it's usually on around nine o'clock. It's called E1R in hosted races because we're really creative with a name. And the password has to do with breaks. It's four characters. Stop. Might be on Richard your bingo Petty. card. It is. It, around. It, 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 Richard Penny. Love to have everybody here, but uh, maybe when we're setting up for do do the race at eight fifty nine, not the time to get a hold of us on one of our social medias and ask for passwords. <laughs> maybe you do it a few hours beforehand. You know, look at, I, you, I, look at you, I, Slowman. I think uh, <laughs> uh, two people who, for some reason, I have their phone number: uh, Tyler and Grusco and Trevor. Uh, it would, Trevor, I'm sorry, am I mixing up the last names? Both of them, I have, I have their phone number. I could call them. Uh, they showed up and they've never showed up before. So I, I think I face 
Facebook tweeted something like an hour before the race. <laughs> I think that that diversified our talent pool drastically. <laughs> so we're going to try and start doing that more often to remind people that we're racing. It was a good time. It was yeah. just, I, I laughed so hard. I laughed even harder yeah. than Daytona. And, and do you know who mentioned that they saw it on the Instagram and then tuned into the Twitch stream? Chrissy's mom. Totes. No, she didn't. No, <laughs> she doesn't even know what those were. She was, she she was too busy playing Fallout on her own Twitch stream Sorry, to watch our race. It's truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have, uh, we're going to move right on to the main topic because it's long and it's technical tonight. Holy cow, I'm so excited. A technical discussion. Uh, we cow. We covered some of this when we were talking about how not to burn, uh, but we really need to go and do a deeper dive into fuel cells. So uh, who wants to introduce a topic about fuel cells? I'll bust in there. So absolutely, you can ditch that little bladder in your stocks, fuel bladder in your stock system, and depending on the series, you can add a little some track time, and now your car is going to dominate. Uh, but is it? Is it really that simple? Well, the short answer to this question is no. And the long answer is no, but with a lot more words. It's And that's we're not, what we're going to do tonight. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. We're not telling you to don't do it. One of the, and one of the feedbacks we got on our earlier discussion on fuel cells was a, a lengthy diatribe on this is why it's a dumb idea. You will always be fighting problems. But when you've got that, when you're running to the pointy end and now you've got to start spending big money to get that last 20%, fuel cell might be the way to go. But just before you dive in, our goal is to give you an idea of everything that is coming with this modification. And like anything that involves fire, really want to emphasize that we are not experts. We did not stay at a moderately priced hotel last night, and our opinions are not expertise. We're just telling you what we've seen, what we've done, what we've read. Always consult your own expert, your attorney, your accountant, your wife, your you know, religious advisor, whatever you want. Um, just remember that fire's bad. Try not to burn. It's no good. I'm going to modify what Mental said. Don't do this if you can help it. Just don't. If you can get away with your stock tank, keep doing that. This is expensive. This is hard. It has lots of drawbacks and is probably not the reason why you aren't winning. But if you yeah. decide that you're going to venture into this scary, scary place, make sure you're checking your rule box, your rule books for the specific series that you run and what fuel cells they require. They're mostly similar, but they're not all the same. And that's really important, especially if you're going to take the time to do all this extra work. Um, we're going to spare you the amazing audio experience of reading you all of the rule books because you do not want to hear all of that. Check for yourself. Most of them have... Um, really good examples of all the stuff that they require in all of their books. So check out whatever you're going to do uh, before you start this project. Uh, I'm going to read a rule book. I'm sorry. You just said they're not going to do it. Now I'm going to do it. Look, well, not the whole thing, not the whole thing, obviously, but all series do not want you to leak fuel. I don't want you to leak fuel. Chris doesn't want to leak your fuel. Mental doesn't leak fuel. Chrissy, he might. Actually, I, 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 yeah. 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 Chrissy, you don't, you don't I was gonna say, mental. sure as hell, does not want you to leak not, any fuel anywhere yeah. because she is a safety professional. Um, at Lemons, you get called in once; they told you don't do it again. You get called in a second time; they threaten to throw you out of the race. No, they do. You're done. No, they, they do. do. You're thrown out of the race. <laughs> Ask you me wait, how you, I, know. Right, I was gonna say you should know. <laughs> you do know. Uh, Lucky Dog's rule book states it clearly: absolutely no leaks. WRL's rule book uses the word "leak" five times in every case. It is preceded by the word "no" or followed by the word "free." SECA GCR says nine point three point thirty titled "leakage and caps." It has one sentence: there should be no visible fluid leaks. Get it? Are you listening out there? This is not an area to experiment or test it out. When you get to the track, with all those disclaimers, are you really sure you want to do this? If you do, here comes the technical discussions. Obviously, you're going to need some parts. You're replacing some parts. You're going to buy some parts. You have to have a quality emphasis on quality FIA approved fuel cell. We like ATL. Does it, is there, is everybody had any difference besides ATL? Cause I, it, Effective ones of all fuel safe, also good. Fuel safe, yeah, good. 
All right. It, <clears throat> like ATL, and it's in the car. You can get a non-FIA one if it's sealed in the trunk, but the fuel cell should have A, professionally made, purpose-built metal container, and B, deformable, puncture-resistant inner vessel and or a bladder, C, fuel-resistant anti-splash foam. Anything else is what we refer to as the big bucket of gas. These have uh, these actually do have a lifespan, like your seatbelts and your seats, all of your safety equipment. It they will expire. Bladders are good for five years before a recertification, which buys a year or two. Foam is a wear item. Uh, now, in the three pedal mafia cars, the fuel the foam is never broken down because no, that's not true. Betty, oh. Betty clogged the hell out of its fuel filter. Oh, and oh, that's I right. I forgot and that. I, and, yeah. and here's why. So Godzilla, since it's on the fuel cell, has never had a problem because Chris and Chrissy store it with nearly no gas over the winter. And who wants to take an even money bet that Betty got put away with fuel in the tank? No one raises their hand because no, no one's taking that bet. All right. So if you're going through all this trouble, then really you should get as big of a fuel cell as you can. Now, lemons will allow up to 24 gallons. And these are actually hard to find. Uh, the other series are usually plus or minus two from your stock size. I, I have no idea why you would go minus two. Just don't. An approved 22-gallon fuel cell starts at $750 on uh, uh, Summit, and it will very quickly get to almost $2,000. That's just for the cell itself. And I know it's going to happen. You guys are going to get on there, and you're going to click, and you're going to type in fuel cell and Summit, and you're going to be like, eh. I found one for only $219. Must so, be on sale. Must be on sale. Those are drag racing fuel cells, and we specified every series. It says they have to be FIA approved. That's across the board, from AER to WRL and historic racing in between. So that Facebook marketplace plastic bag of gas might meet the budget, but they ain't going to let it on track. Sometimes they'll let you run a non-FAA approved one as long as it meets all those things we just said earlier. It's got the metal outer box. It's got the plastic bladder liner inside and it's got the foam. If it meets all those, but it doesn't have the tag and it's not, you know, it's, it's not in the driver compartment, which could be a, like in a hatchback, it's in the driver compartment. Um, then you're, you're actually okay with it usually. Like, for example, we put the one in, L, in the Ombre. That was not FAA approved, but it meets all of those things. But it's way the hell out in the ass by the bumper. Long way from the driver. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't have to have FIA specs. But like the one in the Civic, it's two feet behind the driver. You bet it does. So, all right. Uh, I should also <laughs> mention that if you have been, ever been on an outdoor, uh, excuse me, an outboard motorboat, that's a big old bag of gas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that little plastic tank thing there. And nah. now. Yep. So buying the tank, that's the easy part. This is where it now is going to start to nickel and dime you to death. <clears throat> You're going to need all quality braided threaded AN fittings in line for the whole car. And that adds up really fast at fittings that are between $8 and $25 a fitting. Working with braided A and line hose is difficult, even if you've done it a while, even if you have the expensive tool. The expensive tool makes it a lot easier, but it's an expensive tool, and you're doing this once. And I know all of us, we're going to do it the hard way. I've gotten to be okay at it, only okay, through much trial and error and little pricks of stupid threaded frayed wire in my fingers over the and years. And <laughs> wasted materials. Yep, so lots. Much. So it, it's not easy. Um, so now once you've got all these lines, you now also need to run them outside the passenger compartment, even if your car had lines inside the compartment to start with. You then also need a way to connect it to your stock fuel system. For GM cars, it's easy because there are AN to GM fuel line fittings. It just plugs right in. So that's a nice thing for GMs. For the Honda, we had to use an AN to banjo fitting to get it to mount to our stock fuel filter. That was like 30 bucks for that fitting alone. That's not bad. There's, right. There's, Compared uh, to all the other crap you're going to buy. <laughs> seriously. But just an example, that's one fitting. 30 bucks. Uh, there are AN to barb fitting. So you can then put fuel injection hose and fuel injection clamps to work with that. It, it depends on what your system looks like, but you've got to have all that. You've got to have a filter. You've got it. You, this all adds up really quickly. 
every bend and turn. And if you get, we'll get to get one of those almost 180 looking things to get it on there. It, it's amazing how fast it adds up. Uh, return lines. <clears throat> return Don't lines. Forget. You have to, well, unless your system doesn't have a return, like sure, some of carbs. the modern stuff, but most stuff has a return. So that's double the fittings, double the lines, all routed back out of the car. Not <clears> double <throat> your pleasure. Nope. You're also going to need a new pump. You can either mount that in the tank where it is going to be terrible to service and you know you will have to someday, or you mount it externally, mount it below the fuel level, or at least at the bottom of it if you can. We've usually used a Walbro 255 inline pump because they're readily available. They flow well enough and they're reasonably priced. It also helps that Bruce has a variety of half broken ones in his trailer at any given time from the TQ. So there's automatic He lifts them up and goes, this fix it. Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I think right. this one's okay. One. I don't know why this one's <laughs> no, in No, not here. that one. Not Give that one. Shot. <laughs> no, right, exactly. This one's in um, a box. Does that help you any? No, I, it doesn't. We, we, we should also mention that uh, don't be like Bruce and mount it right next to the muffler. No. Because then that muffler gets a hole in it. Your car is going to stop working and you might die. And yeah. you, you've got to give away an entire bin of cookies to the tow truck. Seriously? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So... Okay, now you got your fuel pump. You now need to make a custom mount. You got a custom wiring. Oh, this is all the way, by the way, more AN fittings. And you need to bring a spare fuel pump because you're going to need it someday. So just have it ready. Um, you're going to need a fuel pickup as well. The one that comes with fuel cells for their bargain price is this like duck foot looking thing that goes in one corner, which is only good for circle track where you're usually accelerating and turning left. So you put it in the back right of the tank. That works great for that. But in road racing, it doesn't work at all because you're doing things like turning right and braking. So you need, you know, something better if although sometimes they just have like a hose that sticks down well that's great you'll be able to use about two-thirds of your fuel capacity fantastic that what what why bother for a good pickup you need to get a holly hydromat which is magic voodoo watch it on youtube the videos they have i don't know how the hell this damn thing works but it works brilliantly cellular walls i don't know yeah. what that means that's what they said it's it's 200 bucks for magnets but okay or, yeah exactly <laughs> It's 200 bucks or more, but absolutely worth it. The other thing you could do, they make multiple puck pickup setups, which kind of go in the corners. And if any one of them goes dry, it shuts that one off for the moment and picks out the other ones anyway. Um, those end up being about the same money, but more work to put in and more hassle. Um, but People who use... use the pucks are very happy with them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I've never heard anybody complain about the pucks. Nope. It's just, it just a hassle to set up. And it makes it harder to take your tank apart because of the way the lines have to go on it. Um, but the, one of those two setups is necessary to use your fuel. You see those three door kind of flappy door ball surge tank things. They don't work well either. We've tried them. It's, it's, we left gallons in the tank that we couldn't use with those things. So don't bother with that. Just get the damn hydromat. It's worth it. And, and I think, have we all been in the car? I, I've not run the Honda out of gas, but I've been there when it started. Neither have I. <laughs> and, and, I, and I say this because because normally the rule is you know hey the hey it just bobbled going through this corner okay yes you that's the rule Jeff and this give one, me one more lap <laughs> no I one, ain't got one more this one Jeff is, just one hey, more no hey it, hey it just bobbled I'm on the back side of the track turn left and come straight to the pits you're never gonna make it Jeff <laughs> just do it, one more lap it depends on how you set it up like I'll give an example uh, the hydromat we have is shaped like a plus but it's an uneven plus and I've mounted it toward the rear of the tank so that one of the legs of the, the short legs of the plucks goes up the back wall and one of them sticks forward. So most of the time you're accelerating and turning, you're getting what you need. But it, it, if you get one of the hydromats that covers the entire floor of your cell, once you're done, you're absolutely done. You're never, it's not starting again. It has sucked it dry. So if you have one that's not as big as your whole floor and you don't mount it, toward the center you will get a little warning like we get warning like thompson turn one is a great example you're braking mm. hard and turning mm -hmm. in coming out of turn one into two it'll hesitate until it goes and you'll get a surprising amount of time if you drive it nicely after that um you, you need know. about ah. two you need two warnings you need the first one to be like oh crap what was, what that? was that what, what was that <laughs> is that is that is am i out of gas and then you go 
And then just again, you're like, Chris, I'm out of gas. It, we're, we're, I'm out. It, we're out. We're, we're, this is happening. I'd like yeah. to mention that when I lost the race because I ran out of gas and we were winning, uh, I had many warnings and I kept screaming about the warnings. And we I kept, just kept telling you to not because come we in. needed because we, we needed were trying to, to maximize we, our day. We had to get yeah. into the window. Yeah, um, it was better so, than that. Would have been better. So, than uh, Chris, I I had no idea that you had not put that in the center. To, yeah. And that's how we got our warnings. That is a yeah. great, like, we're, we're, I need like a, like a bell, like ding, ding, ding. Uh, that is a great tech tip. <laughs> we get the gas and we're accelerating. We'll get a warning when we're braking. I'd rather have that than just be totally dead on the track. It saved our asses oh, a bunch of times. Absolutely. Yes. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. and, and now, now we know. Yep, absolutely. All right. So at this point, you're now probably into the project at least for $2,000, if not more. Uh, you have no idea how much fuel you actually, yes. actually, right, right. Your lemons, your cheap racing car is not that, not that cheap. You have no idea how much fuel you have in the tank, unless you want to spend $450 on a fuel sender and a gauge setup, which are not all that accurate. Uh, if you want a remote fill, uh, just not top, top of the tank. Uh, then you need a different top plate, uh, high quality hose, grounded filler nap cap, another 500,000 yet, yeah, or 500, 500,000. That's what's <laughs> what it feels like, what you're, you're charging here. Uh, $500 plus. Uh, should we talk about our setup? A stick. Make sure that you know exactly how many gallons you've put in. Do the same thing every time. We'll figure out what our fuel burn is. Yeah, I, uh, I like the long screwdriver. And can't hear you. We can't hear you, dude. Sorry. Did you turn I did. I like the long screwdriver and flashlight for the fuel gauge. Yeah. That's what we do. Uh, I, I, we have attempted to get the fuel sender thing to work at some point, right? Was that the, the old Civic? The old tank, yeah. And yeah. it never damn worked. And then it broke. Like it broke off and just fell into the tank. And when we got the new tank that we have now, I said, I looked at the options and I said, nah. for 450 bucks, I am, I'll, I'll use a stick. Thanks. Look, a stick holds up the hood. Why can't a stick tell you how much gas is left? Well, yeah. And I would argue you guys are also very smart and, and you guys have done the math. Uh, in addition to the flashlight and the screwdriver, another key tool is a notepad and a calculator. Okay. We put precisely, and this is exactly what Chrissy just said, you know, just ah, half a can. No, we put 2.7 gallons in this tank. It is now filled at this point. It is run for this many hours. We know that it has used this much gas. And we, well, we also know it varies based on driver. Like, I suck down the fuel faster than Chrissy does. <laughs> no doubt. That's no, it's like we have Chrissy go first a lot too because it helps. Like she gets the best fuel mileage and does the best in the starts. I, I do okay when I'm not trying to win. Uh, so yeah. listen, here's the deal. I, I, I don't know that technical crap. That ain't my job. Uh, somebody's got to reach their hand in the big old vat of gas. They don't call me because I, I, I itch all the time when I touch chemicals like that. But you know what I do know how to do? I know how to mount that sucker because now you have to re-engineer that butt end of your car to make sure the big old bag of gas is protected and is, this, is in a place where it is mounted securely. You're not going to die. It, it's, it's, you're not going to, if you roll over, it's not going to fall out and you're going to be able to fill it. Remember that? So here's the deal. You need to build another cage in your car around the big square thing that you just put in your car. So uh, we love angle iron. Angle iron is, you know, little 90 degree pieces of steel and you can, you know, put that around the edges of your, of, of your, uh, uh, your fuel cell there, and that will hold two different planes. Uh, square tubing, you can make a grid around uh, at least five of the sides. Uh, I like you know, doing both. If you do the angle iron on all of the angles of the cell and then have like a hashtag grid of square tubing on the sides and the bottom, that gives very you protective. all the protection. Yeah, and that's the idea. You not only need to hold it down, but you need to protect it. So I like building like a hat with angle iron and then like a, a, uh, uh, like a foot, a shoe, 
So it like kind of squishes them together. And then the, the, the uh, square tubing, I like that it, Chris called it a hashtag. I was going to say like a tic-tac-toe pattern uh, to, to put the top and the bottom together. Uh, you need to weld it. <laughs> you need to get a good welder doing it. You need to know who's doing it. Uh, this thing needs to be heavy. Uh, Chris E said to use the thinner wall square tubing that will uh, bend to deflect a hit while the thicker wall tubing for the cell cage itself that won't bend in a puncture. So do you get that? He, so he, he, he put the thick cage tubing around the cell and then he mounted it to the car with the thinner parts. So that way when he got punched in the rear end of his uh, sob, it bent and moved, but did not break and did not puncture the cell. So that was a brilliant idea. And we uh, thank him for that tip. Go ahead, Mental. And also when we were that picture that we just put up there, uh, welding the tank into the, the fuel cell into that Fiat, which by the way is still running. Uh, if it is a, if it drops below the trunk and it is visible from underneath, they're going to want to see some angled bars. So that acts as a wedge for any car that would hit you from behind. And rather than puncture the fuel cell, it just lifts the whole car up. Yep. And that, Same and we, thing. Had, we had to do it for that. Yeah. And so, Same thing. If it's in the back of your open pickup truck, <laughs> i.e. the ombre, yeah. it needs to be behind something that is going to uh, not deflect. Look, it should be attached to the roll cage because the roll cage we already know is the strongest part of the car. It can't be the lowest part of the car. It can't be in a crumple zone. It Jeff, it should not be attached to the roll cage. I don't think you were clear about that. Oh, do so not, should... do not attach your fuel cell to your roll cage. They, everyone, every place always wants it separate. Huh. I said that roll cage. I was wrong. I take it back. Yeah. Don't You're right. I've never attached it to a roll cage. Why did I say no. that? I don't know. Because that's what the notes said. I didn't read it right. I, no, the notes said should not be not, attached to I know. a roll cage. I, I, I wrote was, it. I was trying Chris to get worked, to the Chris crumple zone. very hard. Yes. I was, right. I was trying to get, Everyone understands. Don't attach do not it to not attach your to your roll cage. Yes. Right. Because it needs to, again, in an accident, flex. Yep. So, uh, by the way, if you just in case you're in you're listening to the show and you've been building along with me and you just encased all six sides with some really sturdy cage, you just screwed up because you need to make a removable lid so that you can work on it. Cause remember you're going to need to work on it. So you're going to have to pull it out. Sometimes you're going to have to make adjustments. Uh, we like metal strapping over the top. This is thick, sturdy metal strapping with like bar stock. Bolts. Bar yeah. stock, good, thick bar stock with bolts so that when you do need to move it to get something fixed in the bottom, you can unbolt it and slide it. And how easy is it to slide in? It's a pain in the butt. It's going to take you grunting and pulling and shimmying and like butter on yeah. it. And like, well, if, yeah, if you can get the, the metal outer case can stay where it is, but you've got to be able to get that true. bladder out. Yeah. So. Especially if you have to get it recertified. Yeah. So, yeah. So, perimeter bolts, metal straps, sturdy metal straps. Uh, you don't want to be able to, you don't want to have to cut. You don't ever want to have to cut near your fuel cell. Listen to that. Venting. We didn't even talk about venting, but you got to have a vent. It's got to have a check ball valve. Some of them are inside the, the, the top of the tank. Some of them you need to do it external. You got to loop the hose you got to get the the tube so that it terminates below the bottom of the cell and if it rolls over it doesn't leak whole nother bag of problems just know you still got to take care of that that's that line for the vent has to have some loops in it too to break up the air and liquid as if potentially if you go over so it doesn't create a siphon effect yep that's likely in a book somewhere i would think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even with the ball valve you need to loop the hoses Yep. Because a little bit will always push out. Good thing to do before you get to tech. Because usually they yep. look at these things. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk pros and cons. We've given you a whole lot of things. We sound pretty negative, though most of our cars have them. <laughs> and say that they're great, and we still just do it. So uh, pros are it, hold, it holds more fuel. It can likely use a greater percentage of fuel than in your, in your normal tanks. Uh, and they, it's 
probably safer if it's done properly, depending on the car, depending on the setup, depending on how you do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the done properly is the key word there. I've seen some pretty awful looking fuel cells. Like I've seen those those hundred dollar Jags ones with some like you know the you know the kind of metal strapping that they use to hold up like a copper pipe that's just like almost like metal tape and it's full oh, and yeah. it's got the holes and it's, 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 already, it's already got holes in it so it's already yeah compromised. you can just like you, you when you need to break it you just bend it back and forth about six times and it'll snap yeah. i've seen yeah. that over one of them those black jags bucket of gas in the back of a car <laughs> like yep yeah, that's good <laughs> uh, that's yeah. that's in the uh non-inspection race sanctioning <laughs> bodies where you're supposed to inspect it yourself yeah yeah oh no in, in the in those cars we've seen a fuel a spare tire well fuel cell had a pump that had the line that went to the stock tank which just had a hole drilled in the stock tank and a bulkhead fitting bolted to the stock plastic tank and when the tank got low, they'd hit a button to pump the cell into the stock tank. So they had created a huge failure point. Oh, that's terrible. That sounds yeah. like something that you would use to like cross the country at a high rate. Of- <laughs> yeah. But not no. something you use in a caged race car. You know, what, you know what car that was in? It was Bill's E36 that they bought from that team that had been running it in AER for years. And that was okay. Like, you got to be kidding me. Anyway, here are the cons. It's expensive. It's difficult to do properly for many people. It requires yearly maintenance and replacement every few years, adding to the expense. You have an unreliable fuel level. You're probably going to have a more difficult time refueling because it's in a weird location and you'd have no idea when it's nearly full until it spurts back out at you. Right, Jeff? Everybody everybody on the show that has done a shift in the (laughs) Honda smelling gas, raise your hand. Yep. (laughs) Yep. And, yep. and the and the one in this Honda is covered by an entire metal box. It has vents below it to let the gas out. It is nicely sealed. We shove a towel in there just to make sure. Oh, yeah. And then, that's, and then that's, you have to get out of yeah. That's part of fueling procedure is you have to have the towel around the fill neck so that when it spits up, you can collect will. it safely. Right. They're, exactly. they're, they need to start making them clear so you can yeah. see when it's filled. <laughs> like I, yeah. I'm going to invent that. Uh, Clear metal. Uh, Good on or, you. Or, or, or like the, uh, the, the turkey baster thing, you know, like it's a, <laughs> uh, oh, it pops, when it pops, you know, you, you can't even like listen fuel. and wait, wait for Actually, it. So you know like, what we need? No, have, none of y'all had had an E46 BMW, and mentally you had, E46 BMW, and the coolant overflow tank is your level fill too. And yeah. if you take the top of that, there's a little like red pop-up thing that's hooked to a float that when it gets to the right height, it comes up out of the neck to a yeah, certain that. spot. That's yeah, totally yeah, what we need. We need. What if we just throw that. like a, what if we throw like a, like just like a, like a rubber duck in there? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like when the, rubber the duck, duck. when the rubber duck's head pops out, you know, you're done. The duck. Uh, can I, can I give another con? And this is for all you Miata people out there. You're like, ah, oh, Miata runs, uh, it doesn't drink a whole lot of gas. Let's get that 24 gallon cell. Let's try it. Uh, you can really change the weight distribution of your car by yeah. installing a properly si- a, a large cell properly because yeah. that's a lot more gas. And if you double the amount of liquid dinosaurs that you're carrying around and then you surround it by a whole bunch of extra steel, all of a sudden, your well-balanced racing machine might not be balanced anymore. Well, and uh, does it the current the Miatas, their fuel their fuel tanks all sit on top of the axle, and you're gonna have to move yeah. all stuff behind the axle. I saw racing had a fuel cell, went back to a stock tank because <laughs> really they went back to a stock tank because it ruined the handling and they didn't like it. Mm-hmm. So that there, tells you something. About there the are people out there who run cells. A, they, a lot of them do not run max. They run At that a point, bit. why bother? Well, who knows? Spend the money yeah. on suspension upgrades. Spend the money on a coaching session. Yeah. And last thing I'm going to say for cons, outside of lemons, it's pretty much all series have to have the entire fuel cell covered by metal even if it's fia which if you have a sedan not a big deal you just enclose the trunk if you've got a hatch or a wagon it's a pain in the ass to make a box that covers the fuel cell properly so Mm -hmm. one more con so 
Yeah. Anything yeah. else on this subject or have we beaten this well enough to death? Uh, is there any, any uh, places to research this? Is there a book or a, a place you can recommend other than listening to this wonderful podcast? <laughs> no. Just asking. I've, I don't know if anybody's seen it. I've never seen a good thing that's totally comprehensive how to do it. I think a lot of places don't want to tell you exactly how to do it for the liability reasons. They just say, <laughs> make sure you're getting all appropriate stuff and leave it at that. So, you know, we're going to do something similar. But really, it's, it's you've just got to sit there with your AN fittings catalog and go piece by piece down your down the whole thing and make a drawing and make sure you've got the right pieces at the right spots, the right oh, converters, and the it right doesn't, name it. It doesn't matter what you drew. You're going back out. Unless you're yeah. Bill and you order four of every single yeah, so one of these and you order four. <laughs> and we use probably two or three. So, you know, like best laid plans of mice and men are are going to bite you in the ass when you're doing this job. If you you're gonna get two buy in fittings that don't match, or you're gonna strip one out, and then you're gonna be waiting two weeks. Or you were the, the wrong you were wrong about one of the sizes you're that wrong. you thought was the right, or you cut a little too much off of the stupid hose because you couldn't get it right, and now that one's too short, and now you're out. Yeah. Anyway. It'll reach. Just, <laughs> just pull what? just pull harder. Oh, I was like, right. what you, I was just trying to figure out why is, the tiger <laughs> was involved. Like, how did that happen? I needed a tube. Oh, he needs. Oh. He wants to put a tiger in your tank. Oh, okay. Yes. It's hard to see. Right. Black shirt. Get four. Keep them as spares. Okay. You never. Yeah. You're never sad when you have spares. All right. Yeah. So summary on fuel cell. Don't do it unless you really, really are sure that's why you're not winning. And even then, you're. That's probably not the reason. So. And, yeah. And, yeah, and and be prepared to, you'll, you'll budget it all out, you'll get it all built, and then you'll spend 50% of your original budget on top of your budget and probably half your racing season trying Do to Do people get like budget things like that? Like, don't you just say this is going to hurt and just keep buying things? I just don't or, look. Or at least that's what we do. Card, <laughs> don't right? look. That's what we do. I don't know. How, <laughs> I have no clue how much most of these things cost because we just buy them and I'm like, oh. Cool. That's an auto pay. I don't want to know. Yeah. Nope. It's great. <laughs> I think we've beaten this to death. I think yep. let's move on to our final and most favorite subject. I think it's been a couple of weeks since we've done this, right? No, we did one last week with firework. We, uh, this is kind of lame. Oh, it's because it, it was read before. Sorry. I'm just making sure I wasn't supposed to read it suddenly. Why is this red? Okay, we're doing some summer safety. This is kind of lame, but uh, I feel like it's relevant, especially it's, in what? It's hotter than hell out. It's hotter than hell out right hotter now. Hotter than halfway hell? up is a it? snake's ass in a wagon ride. That's exactly what it is. Is it hot where you guys are? What's Dude, the temperature it, it is, right now? It's it was humid. 94 today. And that and ninety five percent humidity, not raining. That's yeah. that's the problem. Okay, that, yeah, so that's I've, the problem. I've got my thermostat set at ninety five. It's lovely when I walk in the house. <laughs> yes, I, I wouldn't mind one hundred and four because then I won't come into the house looking like I was just. Actually, today I was in a rainstorm, doing stuff outside, and it was lovely. And I was still not as wet as I was yesterday. <laughs> I, I, we saw a, a funny meme on the internet that said, if you're in South Carolina, it might as well be like you get a shower, get out, don't towel off, and put clothes on. That's what it's like. <laughs> Chris and I changed our shirts three times on Monday because we went out to the store and I was like, we can't go out looking like this. Anyway, it's hella hot. So um, make sure you wear sunscreen. Uh, just do it even though you think that you're going outside and you're not actually going to uh, be going any, anywhere near the sun. Uh, last thing you want is a farmer's tan and a burn on the back of your neck, but just do it because it's easy that way. Um, make sure you're drinking a ton of water, uh, especially if you're drinking all day. Um, have a drink. Have some water. Have a drink. Have some water. Have next to each other. Have some have some um, uh, seltzer or something like that, because uh, you're gonna get dehydrated and then it sucks and then it's hard to recover after that and then you feel bad even though you haven't drank so much. Um, stay in the shade. We actually moved our boat into the shade because we were working on it and it was so hella hot. So um, <laughs> plasti dip, yum. Um, yeah. So the put, same get, shape as Mentel's beer can. Sure. That's a hold up your that's beer. That's not can. beer. No, that's not beer. Let's be clear about this. Corona, that has corona seltzer. seltzer. Same, so it, it's same it's shape. it's it's pee but clear with more carbonation <laughs> in it. Same flavor. 
Yeah. All right. Get in the shade. And lastly, uh, wear a, sa- a hat and sunglasses. Uh, I have taken to wearing a hat when I'm working outside because it's nice to be covered up. Um, yes, right. And if you have a bald head like Jeff, you will want to have wor- worn a hat because burning that will be miserable. Mm-hmm. So wear hats all the be time. Smart. Be smart. That's what I got. Wow. I'm still disturbed that I have all these phone numbers that meant from mentals cloud you're disturbed. you're disturbed you hacked my phone you weirdo i don't phone believe hacking. that that's what happened but okay it, it has to be from our google phone number it, it has, has to. to be so google does weird things including tracking everything you do <laughs> <laughs> thank you for downloading us and we hope you enjoyed this week's edition of what the hell is on my phone we also hope you'll join us in the world of driving racing and building because Everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit, wait, it's there. Hit that button that's going to cover my face in a minute. Uh, Subscribe. Hit the bell. It'll tell you when we've uploaded a new one. Uh, It's totally free to do these things, by the way. And then no matter how you get us, podcast or YouTube, go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us. Give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, on the YouTube page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or the Twatters at everyone.racers. My phone, my speaker just died. Woo! Thanks. All the wires. The battery's not low. I pushed the button by accident because I was gesticulating. Uh, Maybe it was the battery. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless there is no shiny side, then just keep the fuel cell down. 146. Dear God.